The National Swine Registry is a global leader in swine pedigree services, documented swine genetics, marketing, and education outreach. The NSR prides itself on enhancing the value of pedigreed swine, maintaining breed integrity, providing member education, as well as youth development experiences. Now today, let's focus on education outreach and develop a plan to achieve the highest level of success for your business. Genetics plus health and biosecurity plus management plus nutrition plus environment, it all equals maximum success. You can access video two in our series to learn how to use the stages program for genetic success and video four to learn about health and biosecurity. Now today we are going to focus on other areas that will contribute to your success. Any production system starts on your site location and also facilities. If you're building from the ground up, ABG members can assist with selecting an optimal site from the biosecurity standpoint and a facility design based on your system's needs. Our last video focused on health and biosecurity, and if you haven't yet, go back and watch it for more detailed information. If you have an existing facility, recommendations can be made or modifications suggested to maximize the throughput of your system. ABG members will use experiences learned through decades of swine production in the United States to assist you with determining the facilities that are right for you. Now, some of the questions you may need to ask are ventilation. Are you going to install? natural ventilation, tunnel ventilation, vertical ventilation, or cool cells and misters. Of course, geographical location and climate play a factor in each of these decisions. Now remember, pigs don't sweat to regulate their body temperature, so airflow is critical to their comfort and performance. If you are uncomfortable in the facility, the pigs likely are too. So keep that in mind. So will your gestation barn have stalls or pens, or will you manually feed or use electronic sow feeders? And have you thought about space for guilt development and introduction to the herd? If not, maybe that's an option. Properly managing gilts at entry into the herd is one of the most crucial steps in determining her lifetime performance and longevity. Now, in the fairwing barn, you have to decide a couple of things. Will you utilize stalls, free stalls, or turnaround stalls, or maybe even pens? Now, remember, safety and comfort of the sow and piglets is important to reduce pre-weaning mortality and also maximize throughput through your facilities. So careful consideration of these options and the differences between them must be the top of mind in your facility design. If your farm will be farrow to finish, will your barns be set up with small pins or large pins? And will you install an auto sort system to assist with marketing your finished pigs? Now remember, if this is a genetic farm, performance testing capabilities need to be considered as well. So keep that in mind. And there needs to be space to performance test animals from extra space for electronic feeders to a simple space to weigh and ultrasound off tested individuals. Enough space should be built into the system to allow proper phenotypical appraisal of selection candidates as well. Each of these facility details comes with its own list of advantages and also disadvantages. Let an ABG member take some of the guesswork out of your facility design. They've seen it all and they know what works and also know what doesn't work as well. And now that we have your facility designed, built, and populated with ABG genetics, let's dive into management needed to ensure your animals reach their full genetic potential. Now, we won't go into detail about each stage of production, but we'll discuss the high-level aspects of production NSR and ABG members can assist with on your farm. Each of our members has their own personalized set of standard operating procedures they have crafted from decades of experience that they know work for them. We utilize our Guild Developer Unit, our GDU, as an isolation and acclimation for our incoming females to our main sow farm, commercial sow farm, as well as um, we feed out 
um, pigs that will go on to butcher as well, which is very minimal. Uh, the gilts are, are selected from landrace females at the main farm that are, that are mated to Yorkshire sires. Uh, so we have a, a true F1 cross and then these gilts are, are taken from the, the main sow farm as at weaning age at approximately 21 days and then they're put into the nursery unit at this gilt developer unit. From there they're utilized in that gilt developer or all the way from from the nursery stage all the way up to about six and a half to seven months of age where where they are vaccinated uh, up to our our vets uh, recommendations for for getting getting those up to um, the standard of, of vaccinations and then acclimated to uh, we have a row of gestation stalls that we put our, our call sows in that are taken once again from the main sow, sow unit and then they have nose to nose contact with those growing gilts. Um, that way they're up to date with um, everything as they get prepared to enter the breeding herd at about six and a half to seven months of age and um, then, they, then they're brought back to the main sow farm to prepare for breeding. The first area of focus is gilt development. As we said before, proper gilt development and acclimation is key to the lifetime performance and longevity of sows in your herd. Raising and treating your replacement gilts like the valuable assets they are is paramount. The key highlights of gilt development are boar exposure as they reach sexual maturity, recording when they come in heat the first time, acclimating them to the health status of the sow herd. This can include natural exposure to cull sows or introducing them to the sow herd vaccination program. Make sound selection decisions, both genetic and phenotypic, and move them into the gilt pool. One key metric is to breed gilts in at least their second confirmed heat cycle and approximately 300 pounds or 136 kilograms. If either of those two metrics hasn't been achieved, wait to breed replacement gilts. To have breeding success, heat detection and breeding must be done every day. Proper heat detection and mating with good quality semen will maximize your success. Now, since we've just discussed breeding gilts, we'll spend a little time discussing breeding your sows back after weaning. Most of your sows should come back into heat about four to seven days after weaning. And during this time, they need extra feed and daily boar exposure. These two items are key in reducing your non-productive sow days. And any day a sow is not gestating or nursing, a litter costs you money. Managing females in gestation is is the next step in that flow. Pregnant sows and gilts need proper nutrition to maintain pregnancy with a rotation design to be filling, but not to make her too skinny or too fat in that process. The feed must also contain all the nutrients vital to a litter she is supporting. Now we want sows going into the farrowing house to be optimal body condition. Then sows will lose too much condition during the lactation and overconditioned sows will generally have reduced appetite. Both scenarios leading to decreased milk production and longer rebred interval after weaning. Now, females should be in the farrowing house three to five days prior to their due date. This ensures they have time to acclimate to the environment and gilts need more time than sows. Once the sows farrow, piglets care become top priority. However, that does not mean we ignore the sows. The simplest way to take care of pigs is to take care of the sows and allow her to take care of the pigs. Make sure the sow is comfortable and has access to feed and clean water at all times and then pay close attention to feed and water intake. These can be first signs a sow is uncomfortable or maybe feeling sick. It's also necessary to closely monitor the pigs. Their behavior can tell if they are uncomfortable, hot, cold, or even sick, and allow you to quickly intervene with additional care. Careful observation and attention to detail is key in success in the farrowing house. The nursery and finishing phase of your herd are typically operated in a similar fashion. The main difference being the extra care and attention required for newly weaned pigs. Proper observation to ensure pigs are comfortable and healthy and eating dry feed with access to fresh water is critical. 
Pigs that are chilled, overheated, or off feed will not perform to their outmost potential. Once pigs are moved to the finishing facility, continued daily observation is critical. Now, careful inspection for animals off feed, lethargic, or injured must be done daily. Every intervention for any illness or injury is the best way to limit the spread of the disease. On most farms, the boar stud is either off site or separated from the sow farm from the same site. Regardless of the location, management of boars in your stud is crucial to your sow herd success. Now, just like replacement gilds, replacement boars should be carefully selected based on genetics and phenotype, tested to ensure they don't bring unwanted diseases into the stud, and then acclimated to the health status of the stud. Temperature is critical in a boar stud. Overheating has severe detrimental effects of semen quality. Close attention must be paid to semen quality. This single product can determine the success or failure of your sow herd. Strict standards must be enforced to send the highest quality of semen to the sow farm to ensure the reproductive performance on the farm is not impeded by the semen quality. One aspect we've touched on briefly, but not in detail, is nutrition. And we're not going to go into detail here either, but the important key to success with nutrition is this. Each phase of production demands different nutritional requirements. Nursery pigs, finishing pigs, sows, and boars are all at different stages in their life cycle, and their nutrition should be adjusted accordingly to that. So consult with a trained nutritionalist to develop a comprehensive feeding management plan for your herd. And regardless of your ingredient base, a nutritionalist can develop the right approach to feeding your herd that will maximize productivity throughout the profit potential. Now to close out this video, we want to re-emphasize a point made in most phases of production. Careful observation and attention to detail daily is the most critical key to your on-farm success. No facilities, genetics, or nutrition can take the place of consistent observation and daily record keeping with regards to feed and water intake, temperature, herd health, and general comfort level of pigs. Now, most of the time, observations won't tell the whole story, but the difference in observations from day to day can help prevent issues and allow for early intervention for problems that may arise. Now, we appreciate your attention and know we have only uncovered a pretty small portion of the details needed to successfully manage your herd. If you still have educational questions, please feel free to reach out to the National Swine Registry for more information. And you can reach out at www.nationalswine.com or contact an America's Best Genetics Breeder today with questions on how we, the world leader in pedigree swine, can help advance your herd.